cometh thou to confess, or to accuse? For all sin is my domain. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to our in-depth playthrough of Elden Ring. I'm your host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And today, we're going to start this episode off, as we have many others, with just a little bit of maintenance. So one thing I spend a lot of time doing outside of Elden Ring is uh, poking around with my color and my quality settings for capturing the gameplay at 4K, 60 frames per second. And I gotta tell you, I'm not gonna harp on this for too long, but I do feel the need to express myself in this matter. It has been such a pain in the ass to try to configure these settings, but I'm gonna get it right. I'm gonna figure it out for you guys because this game deserves to be enjoyed at the highest possible quality it can. And I know the last episode came out pretty choppy, I didn't have a whole lot of time to poke around with the settings, but I'm on a schedule here, well, and I want to try to stick to it. To arms, so, it should look a lot better this time. But, uh, anyway, we have a new dialogue for our dear prisoner here. I spoke with the girl. She has a gift for spirit tuning. So I told her everything I know. I'm indebted to a spirit tuner I met long ago. It was all I could do to honor her. I'm sorry I doubted you. I see, so that's why he knows about spirit tuning, that's why he was able to sort of coach her on the matter, because he's indebted to another spirit tuner that he met some time ago. So, let's look at our equipment here. We can take our flail to the next level, which 100% we're going to do that. I am going to start upgrading this shield at some point, but probably not right now. We want to look at this real quick, the misericord that we picked up. This is something that I intend to use. I think I'm going to swap around back and forth between this and my main weapon because the crit on this, you can see it right there, is 140 versus 100. So 40% more damage on the crit for this weapon means it's a great weapon to switch to if you intend to backstab or repost your enemy. So I'm going to start upgrading this and we're going to equip it immediately. Before I touch any of my tier 2 stones, let's see what else we can do. Okay, yes, this right here. This is why we did not use any of those tier 2 stones on the Misericord, because we want to keep upgrading this, seeing as how it's just been so great. We should be able to get to this point where it needs tier 3s. There we go. Yes. That's what I like to see. Now we're going to talk to Rodrika again. Greetings. Are you here for spirit tuning? Why the hell else would I be here? Well, I shouldn't be like that. And we can't upgrade these guys any further, but I'm gonna experiment with these guys. I want to, uh, I want to try to use them against Godric. So that, I believe, should be all of our business here, except for right here. Well, he's not here. Okay. Well, Roger is going to show up here at some point, probably after we beat Godric, but he is no longer in Stormville Castle, or at least when we passed him, uh, he was not in the spot that he's normally in. That's Horalu, by the way. And then this. Let me get a good look at this. That appears to be Merica. Judging by the hair color. And I'm not sure who that is. Hmm. Lots of paintings. Lots of detail in this game. So, alright. Maybe there's one more stop I want to make real quick. Let's go see if Gideon has any new dialogue. The jerk. We've spoken long enough. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Fuck your table, man. I hope you spent hours organizing all this shit on that table, and I hope you have to pick it up and alphabetize it again. Alright, so we left off right here, the secluded cell. This is the last grace in the area just before the boss, and then this one over here is just the lakes, and Bach is over here. So some people alerted me to that and let me know that uh, Bach is over here at this grace, and I did know that. But, when I was looking for him along this coastline here and searching for him, I was trying to see if he pops up somewhere in Limgrave again before going to Lyurnia. 
And I guess that's not the case. I guess up here is the last place that... Or it's the very next place that you can find him after you give him the needle and uh, avenge him. So, we're going to go here to the secluded cell. And I don't think... I don't think there's anything else for us to do in this place. It's good that it's night because um, one helpful individual had told me that these little bastards get a buff <laughs> when it's nighttime. Apparently their eyes turn red and they get more damage, so it's time to get Nocturnal on his ass. And uh, I think that's it. I'm, I'm trying to think to myself, I believe we got everything here, or at least to my knowledge we did, because other than the items that are in the tower nearby, which is at this graves, because we cleared out this other part of the courtyard, this second field, so we'll call it, I'm pretty sure we got every item in Stormvale. So, the only thing left to do now is fight Godric. Mighty dragon, thou art a true born heir. Lend me thy strength, O kindred. Deliver me unto greater heights. Well. Playing as a lord. I command thee, Nilo. I am the lord of all that is golden. All right, so Godric the Grafted. And we can totally see why he's called the Grafted, because... Hey, what do you know? They do get a big old buff. That's awesome. So let's experiment, huh? Let's see how Kukri do. Okay, they do all right. Oh, goodness. Now he's starting to throw shit at me. So, Godric is uh, very similar to Margit in that... Uh, He's real bad about his wind-ups and everything. He's, uh... He's really bad about... Hitting late. Now, this first phase that he's in here has a lot of reach. Like, you're not gonna think he can hit you, and he totally can. So, that axe that he has is not, like, a super long weapon, but the problem is he reaches really far forward. My aim is so bad with these kukris, man, I swear. There we go. Got that bleed. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then that. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be careful. He's, uh... He's able to deflect most things with that storm wall. So, now he's gonna start doing the scream, right? And this is a cutscene. Now he's in phase two, and he's got the dragon arm. Immediately run up and start beating the shit out of him. Now, oh shit, nope, my shield, that's what I wanted, you motherfucker. 
All right, let's bubble up. Ooh. <laughs> All right, so when he goes dragon arm mode, he's going to have most of the same attacks, like with the axe, right? But he... He can hit you when you're close. That's the beautiful thing about dragon mode. Eey. However, his attacks become significantly more devastating because he has the dragon. So what that does... Ooh! Man, you're a dick. Alright. Let me heal because it takes forever for that attack to happen. Again, you want to run forward and hit him when he does that attack because it's free damage. This is a multi-hit slam. It gets a pretty big area of effect. You gotta be careful. Now, if you're too or if you're too far away from him, just run. Like if you don't have time to close the distance, run backwards. That's my advice. And honestly, this shit. Ooh. This Kukri experiment is going incredibly well. <laughs> shit. Oh, I'm not far enough away. Yes, I am. Wonderful. All right. So once you get near a wall, I advise you to get away from the wall. There we go. Very nice. Very nice. That was a little risky. I probably shouldn't have done that, but... Now, he'll shoot fire forward now. Okay? See? Oh! <laughs> Not good. Let me heal before I die. Alright. Oh, I don't have any mana. That's fine. Shit! And then, of course, that fire... It's going to knock you down because he's an asshole. Um, I don't recommend trying to close the distance unless he does this attack. Now, you can run through that fire. Like, you can dodge it or whatever. But, uh... Ooh, I'm trying to jump. I'm trying to jump. Trying to jump. Not working. Whatever. Heal. All right. Yeah, you're not getting through this shield, pal. There we go. That's what I wanted, except I'm late. <laughs> um, I am the lord of all that is golden. And one day, we'll return together to our home, bathed in rays of gold. <sighs> and we get Godric's great room, as well as his remembrance. So it's pretty apparent why he's called Godric the Grafted, because he has many limbs grafted upon him, and the final one being from the, the dragon right here. So if you'll remember, we talked to an NPC that said that Godric has a new toy up here and to take heed, and I'm pretty sure this is what that person was referring to, is this new toy that he was going to graft onto himself was this dragon head. Um, admittedly, the ashes that I used, the uh, the demi-humans, they didn't seem too effective against him. I mean, they definitely got some hits in, and that buff, like being confirmed, like how they are more aggressive and hit harder at night, is pretty damn cool. I'm kind of excited to test them out and use them further. But um, other than that being an incredibly sloppy run against him, I wasn't able to show half the things that I wanted to because, I don't know, I guess I'm just playing pretty sloppy tonight, but... Um, I guess it doesn't hurt to try to talk these things through after the fight if I can't show them in, in uh, action. You can jump over some of those fire attacks, like the one where he sprays it across the ground. Feel free to get a running start and just leap over them. And then the other thing is uh, you always want to make sure to wait until he actually swings at you to dodge. Because panic rolling and dodging too early is something that will get you killed really fast against Godric, so... I mean, you probably saw me doing it over the course of the fight. You know, just uh, just make sure you roll once he's actually swinging the axe at you, because if it hits you and connects directly with you, it'll do a lot of damage, even though I feel like we're a pretty appropriate level for this fight. It shouldn't be too difficult if you're the same level as me, which is 49. So, not super challenging. Uh, but yeah, the, the Kukris 
and the fire bombs, any kind of throwing object is generally very helpful against him because he's, I would consider him a pretty long range fight. Like that's probably where you want to try to get your damage in is far away because he's pretty slow. But when he closes the distance, uh, that's, that's when he can do a lot of damage to you. He can't really do anything from far away. So shoot him with a crossbow, you know, whatever you have on you, fire bombs, kukris, magic, like ranged magic will shred him. Like I suggest keeping the fight far away. And I just happen to have a ton of kukri on hand and, uh, that's what I would recommend trying to do against him because we procced a bleed that really helped with that fight. So, uh, Godric, the Grafted, is down. There's really not a whole lot of uh, godness about him, but uh, if you take the god out of his name, all you have is Rick, and then you have a Patrick situation. My name's not Rick, essentially. So, I love the way Patrick says it, though. He's so distrust. He's so completely just upset about it. He's, God, my name's not Rick! And you can tell how many times I've seen that episode because I know that line. For a lord you were. <laughs> Craven to the bone. Pushing me about like that. And after all that grafting, where did that get you? Look down on me, would ya? Godric, you filthy slug. Feel it. Feel it. Feel my bloody wrath. So it would appear that this guy has uh, some dislike for Godric, and uh, he's stomping on his corpse. But this is the asshole that was trying to sell stuff to us. And from what I understand, this guy's quest line was kind of broken, and then the patch fixed it. Oh, hello there. This weasel was... Godric was always looking down on me. He got what he bloody deserved thanks to you. I tell you though, what goes around comes around. He had an ugly heart, an uglier countenance, and met the ugliest of ends, eh? <laughs> and there's that laugh again. That should pretty much confirm that he's the one that locked us in that room with the Vanished Knight. Uh, which isn't a problem, not if you handle it the way I handled it, but still a dick move, nonetheless. Now, I suppose I'm free. I can do whatever takes my fancy. <laughs> can I, mate? And then that should be the end of his dialogue. Now, I can yeah, handle. so. I'll tell you what happened in my last game, when he was, uh, like, broken, apparently. Is... I ended up not being able to get him to go anywhere except here, stomping the skull for the rest of the game. Apparently he is fixed now though. So I'm gonna rest at this grace and I'm gonna see if that will move him since we've exhausted his dialogue. No, doesn't look like it. So let's try this then. We will go here. The gate side chamber. This is directly above him. And this was the very last grace that we found while working our way through here. And this is where we can open the gate ourselves if we want to. Okay, so he does not come back here. So I guess that what that means for you is since I don't know where he goes next, I'm just going to have to really try to pay attention and find out. Um, what that means for you is you probably want to try to buy as much stuff as you can from him while he's here before you beat Godric. And I think I bought everything I wanted to off of him, so it should be fine, but let's go here. And the only thing we're going to do here is incredibly silly. We're just going to open the door, because if you'll recall, in uh, one of the previous episodes, we already got to the other side of this door, because we skipped, we did the Storm Veil skip, and uh, we have already got to the Grace that is beyond here in Lyernia of the Lakes, and I am absolutely fucking thrilled to let you guys know that that is where we're headed next, and I'm really, really excited about it because everything beyond this grace, like everything going up into this giant chunk of the map that I'm outlining here, is fantastic. It's uh, Lyernia of the Lakes is a very atmospheric and, uh, and it's super 
awesome the the uh the enemies there are different than Limgrave. It's uh I'm telling you. It's a whole lot of awesome. And what we should do before I do well Okay, I've never done this. We're gonna experiment. So we we have the great room, right? Let me look it up in our inventory real quick. Here we go. Godric's great room. Um, the great rune of the shard bearer Godric, devoid of any benediction. Seek the divine tower of Limgrave, which stands beyond the great bridge from Stormvale Castle. That's exactly where we are right now. So, what I did before in my previous playthrough was I ended up heading back to the round table hold. And, uh, I can't use torrent here. All I can do is pick my butt. Now, funny enough mash this guy down real quick that guy back there can hurt these guys so I'm just gonna sit here and let him shoot these guys it's just an easy way to deal with them did it work no I think he hit that pole <laughs> that's okay let's try again Wow teamwork huh shot right between his legs and uh, nailed me. That's funny. Oh, you jerk. All right. So maybe we're not going to fuck with these guys right now. Because, uh, even though they want to fuck with me bad. Okay, we use that. Okay, so he can't hit us if he's aiming at that thing. That's great. <laughs> we will use that to our advantage. And to my understanding, there shouldn't be any items lootable here. Except for the one, which should be up here near him in this dip, I think. No, doesn't look like it. Okay, you shoot that. And I'm going to try to take care of you before these guys get over here. Okay. Oh, come on. And then third. One, two, three. There we go. Handle you. I'll take those great arrows, even though I don't intend to use a great bow. And while these guys are closing in on us, let me do this real quick and see if the... I don't see it. You motherfucker. I wonder if you can get those guys to fall right there. That'd be kind of cool. Alright. So what we want to do then... So we want to take this teleporter. And it's going to take us across the bridge to the Great Tower. And we're going to use this rune. And using this rune is super important. Um, let's see, do we have any? We don't have any. Okay, so once we have the appropriate item... Oh yeah, and got all those damn birds over there. Once we have the appropriate consumable item that I'm referencing right now, it'll make a lot more sense to you guys. But uh, we're going to get a consumable item soon as well that is uh, very useful and taking advantage of these great runes abilities because these aren't just key items these are not just things that we pick up and we just hold on to them as like proof that we beat a shard bearer that's not what they are they are actually usable items and uh, you need a consumable that is called a rune arc and we don't have any but we will pick some up pretty soon and i just want to harp on this a little bit more um i know that the rendered quality isn't really going to show you guys exactly what I'm seeing, but uh, playing this game in 4K has been an enormous step up visually for me. It's been so much more satisfying to play this game in this resolution, and uh, I'm really glad I made the switch, even though it was incredibly expensive. So I'm going to rest, and then we're going to finish climbing the rest of these steps, and we will... We will uh, sort of reawaken this rune, recharge it. 
So this is pretty cool. There are several of these towers across the game, and you can see most of them from these high up points, but each one of them has these two fingers at the top, except for one, and uh, there's a lot of storytelling involved with this. So you can see that that glowing rune symbol right there is completely identical to the rune. And once we go up there and acknowledge, or uh, once we interact with it, it's going to recharge the rune, and it's going to allow us to, it's going to allow us to uh, consume those benefits that you would get from the rune once we use a rune arc. But uh, a rune arc is kind of like being in human form, though. When you die, those effects go away. But the nice thing about Godric's rune, here we go. Yeah, the nice thing about Godric's rune is it will it'll increase all of your attributes by five every single one of them from vigor down to arcane and it's very good like i don't see any reason to switch to any different one in the game at least not for the first half of the game like this one's going to be the best one that you can get until like way way later so it's going to serve us well because running around with five extra attributes in all of our categories is uh, going to do us a great deal of good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take the painfully long elevator all the way back down and then we're going to run across to the other side of the bridge where it was cut off. I do hope that this clip uh, ends up coming out a lot smoother and less choppy than the other one because uh, I was playing that back and I was watching it and not only is it like truly ridiculous in my opinion how long it took YouTube to render that and uh, give you guys the option to watch it in 4k like I think it took like almost an hour for that to become available but uh, that I find to be ridiculous but um, I do hope that the actual quality of this render comes out better because I'm still experimenting I'm still poking around with it and uh, I just want you guys to have the best experience so it should turn out better this time because I played around with my settings quite a bit but let's see yeah this part whatever you do don't don't just go running straight in because these big storm hawks are going to kind of blend in with the other birds but they are in fact a problem It does not look like these guys have the swords, though, which which means these ones are natural. They haven't been tampered with. Now, if you need feathers, this is a great place to farm. Right. Get ourselves this rune item. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a waste of kukri. Not in my opinion, to handle these guys. Okay, the Silver Pickled Foul Foot. Which, I believe that's not the first one we picked up. We should have several of those now, and those will increase our item discovery. So, if we need to farm something, like this damn shield, we can. Okay, and then there is no getting down there. Don't even try. And then the teleporter is going to be over there. That's where we came from, where the other stone stone golems are. And then that's all of Stormvale. To give you some geographical perspective, we crossed the entire bridge of Limgrave. Good shit. So now, let's do our thing. We're going to go back to the round table. We'll have updated dialogue with Sir Gideon, the All-Knowing. And then the door to the Finger Maiden is uh, now open. I want to confirm something. I think Roger should be here now. There he is. He's in bad shape though. So this guy, he's sitting down and then there are these thorns coming out of him and then there's flies around him. So it looks like he really got messed up by the Death Blight. Ah, we meet again after all. I apologize for any offense given by my bearing, but I'm quite unable to move, you see. So, what do you need? Man, I... I really hate this, because 
And he's got three separate paths that we can take here. Like, we're going to exhaust his dialogue and listen to what he has to say. It'll take a minute, but I, I just want to say that I really hate that this is happening right now because he basically is slowly dying right now. Like, there's nothing that you can do to help him, not that I've discovered. And I really dislike it because the Death Blight is just going to slowly and painfully kill him until eventually he dies right here in the Round Table Hold. Ah, you defeated Godric and claimed yourself a great rune. Hmm. Looks like we both got what we wanted out of Stormvale, didn't we? Well done, friend. Something to mark the occasion. Go on. Take it. Alright. As you might have guessed, I still can't move. My fighting days are behind me. No need to be polite. I've no use for it anymore. So he gave us his sword, and we'll look at it in just a second. The misshapen corpse under Stormvale. That is a sacred relic of the Black Knives plot, as that famed night of assassination is known. It happened during the Golden Age of the Erd Tree, long before the shattering of the Elden Ring. Someone stole a fragment of the Rune of Death from Maleketh, the Black Blade, and on a bitter night, murdered Godwin the Golden. That was the first recorded death of a demigod in all history and it became the catalyst. Soon, the Elden Ring was smashed, and thus sprang forth the war known as the Shattering. I once wished to become a scholar, you see. I've spent many an hour scouring the archives for knowledge of that fateful plot. The world has grown crooked, and if you intend to put it to rights, you'd better understand what happened to make it this way. Hmm? And that thing is to blame for the shape I'm in now. I urge the utmost caution. Don't disturb the corpse more than necessary. And that dialogue makes me want to go back and attack it more to see if I can be inflicted with Death Blight. Ah, so you've met D. D is an old friend. We found ourselves journeying together for a time, bound by our exploration of death. But our paths have since diverged, never again to cross. Though that's hardly an uncommon fate for two friends. D was telling me that he discovered the mark of the centipede. The centipede is an ancient symbol of the curse mark. As long as whoever finds and uses it is not nefarious by nature, then we may be able to form an alliance. If only I could speak to them in person, and if they were like you, all the better. Interesting. <laughs> so, the mark of the centipede, you'll notice when you look at the cutscene that shows the death of Godwin happening, the first death of the uh, of the Golden Age, or the, uh, the first uh, death of a godlike being, that mark of the centipede is what's being carved into his back by the Black Knives. Very cool storytelling, very cool lore. I'm telling you, the more I uncover about the story of this game, the more excited I get. So we'll take a look at his weapon real quick, just to show it off. It is a thrust weapon. Just a regular thrust sword. It is not like the Great Epic. It is not a heavy thrusting sword. It is just like a regular one. But the cool thing about it is uh, it has a magical... Um, it has a magical... Uh, Ash of War on it, which is not very costly. It only costs 10 FP, but it's called Glintblade Phalanx, and it will raise those little uh, blue magic swords around you that will home in on enemies, very similar to homing Crystal Soul Mass in the, the Dark Souls games. And uh, it doesn't scale with the intelligence, though. It only scales with dexterity, which is pretty cool. It does need 17 dex to use, so you're going to have to invest in some dexterity if you want to use this thing. But... I mean, it's a cool weapon. It's it's pretty long. It's here. I'll show you. It has the regular thrusting move set of like an S dock, but it hits more than once on the strong attack. Just one tap of the button is two hits, and then you chain it in for two more. And it'll do the same thing two-handed. It hits pretty quick. It's a really cool weapon. And then the weapon art, bam, pretty cool. So I'm going to go back up. And I go back to our badass flail that is completely unrivaled. And before we talk to the two fingers, we are going to go talk to Gideon. Well, except we can't. Fuck you, Edgelord. 
Here's a face we need to talk to. You again. I thought you'd receive a summons to the round table. Nefeli Lou. We met at Stormvale. I'm glad to see you here. I have something for you. I found it in Godric's grafting grounds. You were the one to defeat him. I would hazard. Make good use of it. I don't intend to make a habit of scavenging corpses. Okay, and she gave us a charm. So, we only have two slots again still, but this one here is pretty good. It raises your maximum equip load. We are at 62.5, and it will send us to 71.8. That's pretty good. That's almost 10 full units, which means we could equip a significantly heavier weapon or even just an additional one and still be able to fast roll. So... I'm not necessarily in need of that right now. We can still do like our, we're still at medium load, so we don't need to make use of this at the moment, but we just might if I need to have the Arbalist on me while being able to escape. So we have that avenue now. Ah, oh, yes. I wonder if you've met my foster father. He's in his study. The room enters guarding just over there. If you haven't already, I advise you introduce yourself. Father is leader of the round table. I'm sure talking to him will be worth your while. Oh, we've met. It's about time I headed off. I'll see you again, warrior, should the fates deign it. Alright, and that's the end of her dialogue. And that door's not going to open up. We don't get to see Shit Eater Steve yet. I think... What time is it? It's morning. Let me change the time real quick to nighttime just to make sure that that's not the flop that's happening with Gideon right now because I have seen in my other playthrough that nighttime is when he likes to go in here and it's still not open okay so pretty sure I have to go in here and talk to these folks in order to talk to him again are you that new tarnish You've done well. I am Enya, the finger reader. I interpret the words of the fingers, envoys to the greater will. Look there. The fingers tremble to welcome you, Shadbear. Let their wisdom wash over you. Great Elden Ring, root of the Golden Order, anchor of all lands, giver of grace, wellspring of all joy. Until it was shattered, the tragic corruption of the Order has taken its toll. Across the realm, life lies in ruin, fallen to pieces. Foul curses and misery spread, unabating. But the greater will has not abandoned the realm, nor the life that inhabits it. So it is that the tarnished are guided by grace, called to act, brave tarnished. Your great rune is a handsome shard of the Elden Ring. Seek another of its kind to become Elden Lord and restore the Golden Order. Let the words of the fingers guide you. So it's very interesting that her voice kind of changes when she is interpreting what the two fingers are saying. And... I want to point out that this is absolutely an assumption. You know, I didn't hear these things say a damn word. So we have to assume that this person is interpreting the correct terminology. We have to assume that Enya is telling us the truth. And that's really what the fingers said. Now, these giant fingers, I mean, you would think that if they need us to go somewhere or do something, they could just point, right? <laughs> Fingers can do that ineptly, but let's talk to her again. Well, well, I see. A remembrance of gold has found its way into your possession. Demigods and even the creator of the champions 
are hewn by the earth tree upon their end into remembrances. They are valuable indeed. These remembrances yet house the power of their former masters. And should you wish to wield that same power, well, I will lend you the strength of the fingers. Oh, do not recoil from my offer. The fingers guide us all. And you, tarnished, you are here to take, are you not? I suppose you're right. So if you do the About Great Runes, she will just go on a spiel about their power and what they can do and everything, but I'm just going to give you the TLDR version of that. When you get a remembrance of a Shardbearer, and this is not for every boss, this is only for Shardbearer bosses that offer you a Great Rune, you can go here. Well, okay, maybe not. There are some... There are some boss equipment that are obtainable from this maiden just not in this sense and i'll make sure to show you the differences between those over the course of the playthrough but we beat godric so we have his remembrance the remembrance of the grafted and what that will do is it will allow us to do one of two things you can either consume the item for a certain amount of runes i think godric's will give you twenty thousand, and that's it could be worth it if you don't need either of these weapons, but if you don't want to consume it for just runes, you can do this. You can either turn it into his axe, which has the unique weapon ability, I Command the Kneel, and it's just a big shockwave, like multiple hits in the ground, and uh, it's really good for groups of enemies. This is a pretty cool weapon. It's considered a great axe. It's not a one-hand axe. This is going to be in the same category as the big-ass great axe that we already have. It weighs 11 units, but it's got decent scaling. It needs quite a bit of strength and dexterity to use, so plan on running a quality build if you want to use this weapon. Uh, it hits pretty hard. It's got decent base damage, and uh, the D scaling in both categories should increase Cs the further you upgrade it. And uh, you can get some pretty good damage with this weapon. Then this thing is for Faith Builds. This is his Grafted Dragon, and it's got the bear witness so <laughs> both weapon arts are his two uh most iconic lines in that boss fight and uh bear witness will create a big lake of fire on the ground and it's pretty good it's really good for shit that's weak to fire um this is the weapon that i'm going to go with i used his uh soul to create this weapon on my other character and i'm gonna be real honest with you it's pretty useful so um, we have the stats to use it specifically because of the sore seal, and I'm fine with that. Like, it does need 20 strength, even though it's considered a fist weapon, but it's got triple scaling. It's got a D in strength, dex, and faith. So, um, yeah, I may as well make this, because it's, it's pretty good. So, what we will do now... Before I end this video, is I'm going to level up just a little bit, and then we're going to go see if that door to Gideon is unlocked. We're going to go Faith. We only need a couple more points, as a matter of fact. There we go. Let's go talk to this jerk. You've received the wisdom of the two fingers, have you not? Then, just as promised, I bid you welcome. As a true member of the Round Table, I am known as Gideon Ofnir, as a tarnished who wishes to stand before the Elden Ring and become Elden Lord. I am accumulating knowledge to be all-knowing. You now belong to a select group of fellows. As such, I ask that you remain constant. You'll be after more great runes now, eh? Then, as your fellow, allow me to divulge a little knowledge. The inheritors of the great runes, the shard bearers. We of the round table know the location of five of them, including the one you defeated. Godric the Grafted, Lord of Stormvale. General Radan, who fought Melania and her rot to a standstill in the Caled Wilds. Praetor Rikard, 
Lord of the Volcano Manor of Mount Gelmir. Morgoth, the Grace Given, Veiled Monarch and Lord of Lane Dell. And Renala, Queen of the Full Moon, ruler of Rhea Lucaria's Academy. You'll still be after more great runes, won't you? So, you can get him to uh, tell you interesting stuff about all of these uh, characters here. These are the ones that they know of. So, Godric, we just beat him. Radon, we're going to take him down. Uh, Rikerd is probably one of my favorite bosses in the game. Uh, Morgat is, uh, well, if you're here playing Elden Ring, you probably already know this. Morgat is Margit, just supercharged. They're the same person. And Renala is going to be in Rey Lucaria, is uh, the the priestess or sorceress of the full moon. This name, however, he did not mention. And I brought this up in a previous video, and in a very obscure little bit while talking to him, I said that there was going to come a time where you're going to see all these names pop up, and it is your duty to recognize these names and be able to tell the difference between them, because he didn't mention Nephili, because Nephili is the girl standing outside of this room. So, navigating through this menu, you might not want to hear about any of those boss fights that he just mentioned, but you might overlook this, and this is necessary for her quest. So just pay attention, and don't overlook her name in this menu. I understand you've been speaking to Nefeli. She's my daughter. I took her in when she lost the guidance of grace. Though a mere axe-wielding barbarian, her youthful credulity suited my purposes. So I put her to work. Do not hesitate to employ her. Should her services benefit you? Despite her looks, she is more than capable in the press of battle. Oh, that was a very sexist thing to say. You should never assume that women are not effective in battle. Um, Lady Brienne of Tarth is a perfect example of that. She was for sure one of the best characters in that entire show. You can't convince me otherwise. So, all right. We have talked to Gideon as much as we need to. We're going to go brush up on her dialogue. Never mind. She has disappeared. Okay. Rebellious child. Um, and you. We'll be dealing with you soon enough. Ensha. Lord of the Edge. And then we'll talk to D. Oh. Hello there. What can I... And bam, because Roger mentioned D, now he's going to converse with us about Roger. Are you acquainted with a man named Roger? You know, the piteous fellow hiding away on the balcony. He was a formidable spellblade in times past. Don't let his easy air deceive you. He was wise beyond his years, stout of heart and clear of mind. No more, though. You see him now, ravaged by thorns, muttering and rambling, like he's half dead already. I can't stomach to watch. Take well the lesson, friend. That's how you end up when seduced by those who live in death. When grace is sullied, it rots people from the inside, breaks them. Wow, well, that was very specific. All right. So, yeah, he's completely right. Uh, Roger tampered with the big eldritch alien being beneath Stormvale. And uh, now he's in the state that he's in, and all we can do is watch, which is highly unfortunate. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it here, ladies and gentlemen. Um, apologize for the shorter video today, but uh, I know that the file size is going to be pretty massive, and I would like to keep this just a little bit manageable so I can uh, stay on schedule and upload as uh, often as I've been able to, because we want to go up in quality, but we don't want that to interrupt the flow of uh, the upload schedule, right? So I want to keep you guys entertained, and I want to keep uploading at the pace that I've been at without any drawbacks. So, thank you guys so much for joining me on today's episode of Elden Ring. Uh, make sure to leave a like on my videos if you enjoy them. It really helps me get into the YouTube algorithm, which will put me in front of more people. And that is really my goal this year, is uh, we're shooting for the moon. And I know I can get there with your guys' help. So, I've been your faithful host, Let's Play Dark Souls HD. And I will catch you guys 
in the next video.